This video goes out to my boy Reggie, who has more subs than me. But on this particular video, I think I'm going to get more subs than you. This video alone will attract thousands of subs. Not subscribers, it's subs. <laughs> okay, so the influence for this particular house that we're going to create has to do with this Victorian home and I had another image that I found online. So these two images I downloaded and we're going to use these as our main source of reference. The shape of this house is going to be I see an L pattern but it's more like an R shape so it, it's going to look something like, if I could get my tool up in one. All right, so it doesn't want to work. It's fine. Let's just create the floor plan of this house by using the Create Polygon tool. So I go to Mesh Tools, Create Polygon tool, and I'm going to hold X. When I hold X, it actually snaps it to the grid. If I go in a clockwise uh, form or clockwise pattern, you're going to see that the normals are facing uh, the opposite direction. And that's fine for now because we're going to extrude that later. So I'm going to modify this shape just a little bit more by selecting the back two vertices. I'll hold X and I'll snap it like this. And I think I want the entryway to be a little bit wider. Okay, so I'm happy with this shape. Okay, right now it's an end gone because there are more than four edges around this single face. All right, so I'm going to use the multi cut tool found under mesh tools, multi cut. So I'll click on that edge. Click here, press return, click on that vertex, and then this edge, press return. Since I'm a stickler for perfection, I'll click on that vertex, I'll hold V, I'll drag it down, and I'll bring it to the right. You can eyeball it, you don't have to do it this way. Okay, perfect. So, this is my object. You can see my manipulator tool is in the center of Maya the belly button of Maya. I just go to modify a center pivot and there we go. All right, so I'm going to pull up the uh, reference images in my uh, front view. So I go to view, image plane, import image. I'll find the gable design. And when you create an Im uh, image plane, it's going to go right to the center of Maya. It does it every single time. There isn't like a a way it's kind of like default so I move this over here I'll press R to scale it up and I'll turn the grid off for now okay so that's one reference image and then the other reference image I'll import it on an image plane and I like the post of that particular object our house And another thing that we can take into consideration is that since we have this pattern, we could actually draw on it, like it, use an EP curve and revolve it to create that shape. So a lot of objects that I find really interesting, I'll just copy them. I'll create that shape as an EP curve and I'll revolve it right down the center and it will give me the opposite side. So we'll worry about that later, but um, just something I wanted to bring to your attention. Okay, so those are my images and Maya's gonna crash on me. So we'll open it back up. Those are my lesson plans. By the way, you wonder what that really relaxing music is in the background it's that dude it's my uncle i know there's a whole lot of resemblance if you know who i am then you can see it there's a lot of resemblance 
Got the nice crystal blue eyes. Got a beard that sound that looks like that. Like not really, but it's kind of stubby. All right, so come on, Maya. I don't, I'm running out of jokes. All right, so I'll open that scene back up. Let's go back to the desktop. Animation one, floating island scenes, trees, and don't say. Okay. So, take me two seconds to create that shape again. So it's the mesh tools, create polygon tool. I'll hold X. Oh yeah, all right. Happy with that. Again, I'll go back to the multi-cut tool and I won't worry about perfection this time when it comes to getting those edges to be perfect. No, I lied, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I'll press F. Now I'm just gonna press Control E to extrude to give it um, height. But I'll bring it in the opposite direction for now because what I am going to do with this section is create little windows underneath here as if there was a, a basement. Okay. I'm going to take these faces here. I'll press Control E to extrude them up. All right. So that's going to be the height of my of my house. If I wanted to make it a little bit wider in the back, I can simply select those four faces and do something like this. Okay. All right, perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is extract the walls. All right. I'm going to extract the walls. The reason why I'm extracting the walls is because I want to use the insert edge loop tools along these faces. Uh, to create the openings of the doors without having that edge loop go all the way around this bottom object. Okay, so I'll select all of the top faces here. I'll go to Edit Mesh and I'll click on Extract. Now, as soon as you click Extract, you get your manipulator tool here. If I press W, it disappears. So I'm simply going to go to Object Mode click on that wall and again it is a new piece of geometry that was extracted from an existing piece so the manipulator tool goes right to the belly button of Maya modify center pivot and there we go we have our walls okay so I'm going to extract the ceiling if I hold spacebar you see this little button there that says recent commands. I can left mouse click on that and then there's extract face. All right, so I don't always have to go to the top of my screen and then I go back to the center pivot. Okay, so that's the ceiling. That's the um, entryway. And this is going to be the balcony. All right, so I'm just like that face here. I'll control E or extrude. In Maya 2018, if you hold shift and you click on the arrow, it actually extrudes. So that's um, an easy way for you. All right. Now I'm going to create the stairs. All right. I'm going to create the stairs. So I go to my side view. And if I press 4, I can see that my floating island is in the way of me modeling. So I'll select that entire group. I'll move it directly in front of the island. So this is what I have. I'll press five. I'll turn the wireframe unshaded on and I'll turn off my grid. So that's the side view of my house. I'll go to mesh tools, create polygon tool. I'll start off by holding V to connect the first point at the edge or the vertex there. I'll hold shift. Shift, 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 and then click away. And then I'll hold V to snap it right there and press return. All right, so I wanna make sure that the bottom part of this object is flat. I'll take that vertex and I'll move it up here. Okay. 
So there we go. All right, these are my steps. I am going to use the multi-cut tool. So mesh tools, multi-cut. Now I'm going to create quads. Press return. Click on that vertex. Click here. Press return. This one, and then that edge. Press return. This guy, that guy. Press return. And now I'll select this object. So modify center pivot. Control E. And I'll bring them over this way. I won't have it go all the way across. Again, the normals are facing the wrong direction. So we'll go to mesh display reverse. Since Maya crashed on me last time, I'm going to go to file, save scene as. <laughs> House underscore zero zero one block six. Now, there are a few ways that we can make these steps very interesting. If we wanted them to have like a very rustic feel, we can add a plank to them. So if you wanted to add a plank, I would simply select these faces. I'm going to move this, these guys down. Oops. Let me just move this one down a little bit. And I'll select these three faces. I'll extrude them up like so. And then I'll select that tiny little face in the front. Press Control E. Move it forward. And if you want it to have uh, the feel of a plank off to the side as well, we can select those faces here. Control E. And we can move them out like that. All right. So that's if you want it to feel as though there were, you know, planks on there. All right. If you didn't care too much about the planks and you want it to look and feel maybe like a smoother, smoother step, like a smoother um, edge, I'm going to simply select these faces, edit mesh, duplicate. I was having a hard time saying that last class. Duplicate, duplicate. All right, so Control E. I'll move this over. And I'll select these edges, one, two, three. And I'll go to Edit Mesh Bevel. Now the bevel, if you look at the fraction, I'll click on the word fraction, left mouse click and hold, and change that to a smaller value. And then the segments, I'll increase that value. So now what we get is a step that has smoother edges versus something that looks like there are planks. So you could pick which step you feel is best for you. Okay. All right, sweet. So I'll click on both of those steps, edit, delete by type history, and that's that. Next thing I'm going to do is add, let's start off down here. I'm going to add that little window I was telling you about earlier. So if I go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, I'll add an edge loop here, right there, and one right here. I'll select this face, I'll press Control E, I'll move it back. And I'm actually going to delete all the faces underneath because I don't need them. They're going to be flat on a surface and yeah. And then I'll take this face here. So let's move this back a little further. I'll add an insert edge loop tool right here. I'll select that face, control E, and move it straight down, like that. I don't have to move it that far. And then you can add a window right here. So 
I'll take this face. I'll go to Edit Mesh, Duplicate. And I'll go to Object Mode. I'll highlight that. I'll hold Shift to deselect that. And I have this face selected. Modify Center Pivot. So this is going to be my window that I'll put right here. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to give it a little bit of thickness. I'm going to right mouse click and hold, assign new material. I'll give it a blend. I'll call that window and I'll change the transparency like halfway. All right, transparency. Where are you at? Window transparency. Doesn't see our transitions. Come on. Doesn't want to see in the work. Oh well. We'll just worry about that later. Okay. On to the door. I'm going to select this face, the front door. I'm oh, sorry, the front wall. I'll go to Edit Mesh, Extract. I'm going to extrude this edge up, so Control E. I'll move it up, and then I'll press R to scale it together to create my gable wall. Okay, and then I will select this face here and extract this, edit mesh, extract. I'll use the insert edge loop tool twice to create my door opening. I'll select this face. Control E, I'll push it in like that. Okay. The object mode. And then we're going to add um, a door frame around this. Very, very, very generic door frame. Okay. Um, there are lots of ways of creating a door frame. We can use like an EP curve, loft it, and make it look very fancy. I'll teach you a very simple way of doing it, and then you can go back and do it another way. Um, very simple way is simply going to the Create Polygon cube. I'll look at the front of my house. I'll put a cube right here, although you can't see it, it's there. See? I press 4. I move this guy forward. So there's my polygon cube. All right, place it there. I'll select this guy, move it there. And you can hold V and it'll actually snap like this. And now I'll move it back. I'll select the edges on uh, the faces on both sides. Control E. I'll move it to the right. And then I'll select the faces underneath. Control E. Move it down. So as I'm you know extracting things, I also want to keep in mind the scale of objects. I don't want it to feel like like a little kid's toy house. So I want to make it a little bit thinner. And we can bevel uh, some of these edges. So I'll click here. I'll hold shift. And I'll select all of these edges here even the ones underneath. Okay. 
All right, now I'll go to Edit Mesh, Bevel. I'll change the segments to a value of three is fine. And so it looks, you know, really nice. All right. The, um, to create a different way of that, I'll, I'll actually show you in a different tutorial. Okay, now let's create the window. I'll select this face, control E. I'll change the offset like that. I'll press W and move it up. And we can like change the offset. You can select that face, or if you wanted to simply go to mesh tool, to insert edge loop, and add two vertical, two horizontal, that's perfectly fine. All right. If you do it this way, then you'll have to go back and maybe adjust some vertices so that the window is the right width. Okay. So I'll select that center face, control E, I'll move it back, and I'll eventually extract it later. Okay. Cool. So that's the entrance. I think I want another window here. So I'm going to use the um, face. I'll extract that. So edit mesh, extract. And I'm extracting walls because sometimes I don't like to have edge loops go wrap all the way around an object. I'll eventually combine a lot of things together. So this is my wall. Modify center pivot. I see there's a lot of history on my object, so I'll highlight everything. Edit, delete by type, history. I'll select this wall. Mesh tools, insert edge loop. And I'll add maybe two walls or two windows side by side. So I'll go to my front view and I'm going to get the bottom of my window to match the bottom of the front window, which is in that section. And I'll double click on this edge so that it selects the entire edge loop and align it like that. If I double click on this edge, it will select that edge loop. And here we go. Maybe a little bit smaller. Because I think this would probably be like a bedroom or something like that. Okay. So now I'll select that face, that face. Control E, I'll move it in, and then I'll press, let's go to extract, edit mesh, extract, I'll select that face, that face, modify center pivot, I'll move it out front, I'll select this face, edit mesh, extract, and I'll move to go to modify center pivot. I'll move it out front. And I'm gonna select all three of those um, windows. And my layers under the channel box editor. I'll go to layers, create layer from selected. I'll rename this to windows. And save. And I'll actually hide it for now. Okay, obviously we could see inside the house it's not a big deal all right because we're gonna have curtains and a window there now um, I'm gonna move on to the roof and I'll come back to like the doorknob and things like that so I'm going to select the left right and the top edge of my roof I'm gonna press control E and move it here all right, now what I want to do is actually snap it to that edge. So I'll go to my top view because I think it'll be much easier to do that. I'll hold V and snap it there. All right, now I'm going to 
hold shift and deselect that edge there. Okay. And I'm going to extrude it one more time. And I'll bring it like this. I'll press E, I'll hold J, and I'll rotate it at a 45 degree angle. All right, so now here comes the tricky part. It doesn't like a 45 degree angle to me. All right, let me show you how we know if we're at a 45 degree angle. I'll simply create a polygon plane. I'll hold shift. I'll go to the mesh tools, multi cut, and I'll go here, there, press return, here, here, press return. And now this shape will serve as a reference or a guide as to whether or not this when are this uh, roof is at a 45 degree angle. So I kind of put it right there. So now when I select the edges at the top of my roof, so this one, two, I press E to rotate. And again, I'm gonna hold J. And if I press W and move it up, that's at a 45 degree angle. Now you notice that some things have been a little bit distorted. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on that vertex. I'll hold V, snap it to the left, hold V and snap it upward. I'll click on that vertex. I'll move them over and I'll bring them down like this. So I'm kind of like eyeballing it. And I want these. To be aligned with that. So I'll hold V, drag it to the right and then drag it straight down. I'll click here. I'll hold V, drag it to the right and drag it straight down. And then I'll move these guys down like that. Okay. So now that we create that, we'll go to the same edges that we had before. So one, two, and let's see here. I'll click on that edge and that one. I'll press control E, I'll move it forward. And you can see that this edge is like really off like that. If I press R, which is the shortcut for scale, and I hold J, I'm going to flatten them together like that. And now I can simply go to the top view. All right, hold V and snap it to the edge of my house. And this section right here looks a little bit off. So I'll click on that vertex, I'm sorry, that edge. And I'll drag it to the left. Or I can select the entire vertices here and bring it to the right so it's right in the center of the house. And there we go. All right, so last but not least, I'll select one, two edges, control E. I'll press W to bring them down. I'll hold V to snap it to the top of that roof. I'll go to vertex mode, I'll select that vertex, I'll hold V, drag it over, select that vertex, hold V, drag it over here, and 
voila. Alright, so there's our roof. Okay, and then in the next tutorial, I'll teach you how to add a little bit more pop to this house. Uh, handrails, doorknobs, curtains, and maybe a few other items to get this house looking close to Little House on the Prairie. Closer to what we envision it to be. So I hope you like, share. What was the third one? Subscribe. Subscribe. Subs. Subs, Reggie. <laughs> I hope you hope you subscribe. Okay guys.